A gothic hot rod hearse with raised rear suspension, a blower popping out from under the hood, loud pipes, and a zombie for a chauffeur. How else would Dracula get around in the modern world? Nestled securely in his coffin and kept safe from sunlight during the daytime hours, the vampire lord leads his army of monsters at 100 miles per hour. I have to admit it, I love this set. Hi everyone, I'm Mac, and in this rebuilt video we take a look at LEGO Monster Fighter set 9464. This is the Vampire Hearse. Monster Fighter line was released by LEGO in 2012 and seemed to have only lasted that one year, and unfortunately, I missed out on it. Though I do plan to find more of these sets and add them to my collection over time. This set we're looking at now I purchased last December at Steel City Con, and I'm so glad I did. It's kinda awesome. The first thing we're gonna look at is the hearse itself, and what a ride this is. One worthy of a vampire. Looking like a hot rod Cadillac hearse from the 50s, the vampire hearse resembles something that rolled out of the movie Monster Squad. And if you don't know what Monster Squad is, check it out. The hearse is suitably decked out all in black with some uniquely colored crimson modified plate pieces acting as curtains along the windows at the back. Gold accents set off the look of this machine and adds a suitably regal gothic look to the entire build. Up front we're treated to a monster V6 looking engine with a big Mad Max style blower rising up from under the hood. Along the sides are bones, three on each side, standing in place of the intake manifold pipes. Only three on each side. I really thought the Lord of the Undead would be cruising around in a big block V8. Two small windshield pieces put together give the front a distinct split windshield look rather than one solid piece, and the overhang roof gives it a very low, chopped look with a big graphic emblazoned on it. This is not a printed piece which is a disappointment for a graphic this large, and because this set is roughly 8 years old, the sticker has not kept its adhesion and is having a tendency to curl at the edges. I'm probably going to have to get some craggle to hold this down. And as you may have guessed by looking at it, yes, this hood art glows in the dark. A few other things I like about this build are the gold side lanterns, the big pipes, mag wheels, and the lifted rear suspension. This is so hot rod. I also like that this build is smooth, the only place in the body you can see studs are across the roof. A few things that I think could have been done better are 1. The interior. While I like that the floor of the hearse is white, it gives a sharp contrast to the all black exterior of the hearse, it's pretty bare bones. Bones. Halloween. See what I did there? There are no seats, which is fine. A lot of larger vehicles like this are built with no seats, but the only thing inside is a steering wheel that is truthfully pushed too far forward. Because of the dual windshield technique used, the driver can't get close enough to the wheel to even look like he's holding on to it. But you can barely see this from the outside. This in and of itself is an easy fix. I'm going to move the wheel back by a stud and probably get a white 1x2 brick to pop in place behind it. On the passenger side, there is nothing. While we're looking down inside the cabin though, you can see that this is an 8 stud wide build, giving plenty of room for too many figures to ride side by side. And at the rear of the hearse we have it wide open. Nothing closes it off other than this great piece. I understand why the back needs to be open for the function of the hearse, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but it still looks incomplete, and I think if this set would have been built now, LEGO would have found a way to better finish off the rear of this hot rod hearse. The Vampire Hearse comes with three minifigs, and the first one we're going to take a look at is the Hearse's Zombie Chauffeur. A simple minifig, but with body printing and a face portrait that effectively lets you know that yes, this is a zombie. A gray headpiece and tattered chauffeur uniform, and one brown piece to signify one glove. I actually love this guy. I need more zombies like this in my collection. And he's the driver. The driver of this hot rod hearse is a zombie. How metal is that? The zombie chauffeur minifig doesn't have a hairpiece, just a hat, but how many zombies have full locks? Nor does he have any accessories, but does he need them? He drives a hearse. The second minifig we're going to look at is named Rodney Rathbone, the Van Helsing type character of the line. And look at this guy. A proper English gentleman type character with some big mutton chops, a bowler hat, and a steampunk cyborg leg. This line was awesome. The body printing is fantastic. A detailed vest with a white shirt and tie with the cinch strap at the back, this figure is great. 
He has only one face portrait, which is understandable considering he wears a bowler hat and no way to cover up the back of his head. He comes with no hairpiece, just the bowler, but look at all the accessories he does come with. First, he has a revolver element that we've seen before. I'm assuming he's loaded up with silver bullets. But in addition, he also has this rapier. How many times have we received this piece? I'm not even sure LEGO makes this element anymore, and I love it. The rounded tip they had to include for safety reasons does give it a fencing foil look, and truthfully, I think that's what the original mold was intended to be, but at the same time, it makes Rathbone look darn dashing. A final accessory is that he comes with a stack of dynamite, and once again, I have to say this is a total throwback to Monster Squad. And the Lord Vampire isn't the only one that gets a ride with this set. Rathbone has his own set of wheels, too, in the form of this retro-looking motorcycle. Maroon in color with a yellow headlight, off-road tires, painted fenders, rear fender clip, and a turbo exhaust, Rathbone's bike is more than enough to keep up with the hot rod hearse. The rear fender clip and hollow stud are there to carry Rathbone's gear, the dynamite and either the rapier or the revolver. I know this is the standard motorcycle body that they have used numerous times for mini-scale fig bikes, but something about the color and paint deco of this one really makes it stand out to me. And finally, we come to the star of the set, Lord Vampire himself. Even if you're not completely familiar with the Monster Hunters line, which admittedly I'm not, it's easy to see that Lord Vampire is the Dracula stand-in and the obvious leader of the Monster Forces. Decked out all in black with some really well-done torso printing, I love the crimson color they used for his shirt and his fierce eyes. Lord Vampire comes with two face portraits, his standard fangs out commanding face and his open mouth, I'm gonna bite your face face. Lord Vampire's hairpiece isn't anything we haven't seen before on minifig vampires as well as the Joker, and truthfully, it's not long enough to cover up the tips of his fangs of his second face print and back. However, you have to be really looking to notice it, and so it's not something that bothers me greatly. His body pieces, head and hands, are colored white, giving him that non-human paleness to his complexion. And further, Lord Vampire's head is made of glow-in-the-dark material, just like the sticker on the hearse. For accessories, Lord Vampire comes with a few things. First, we have the sword. This big, black, mean-looking sword that is just perfect for this centuries-old character. Next up, what would a vampire be without his coffin? When his zombie chauffeur is driving him around, Lord Vampire makes sure he travels in style in this black coffin element that fits perfectly in the back of the hearse. But more than that, when you lay Lord Vampire in his coffin in the back of the hearse with the lid off and flick this switch, you can launch the undead leader into battle. And finally, Lord Vampire has this red moonstone. The moonstones were the collectibles of the series, and different moonstones came with major sets of the line. In-universe, the Moonstones were what the monsters and the mortals were fighting over, as far as I understand it. If Lord Vampire should collect all of the Moonstones, he would be able to eclipse the sun and bring eternal night to the land. Nice, right? In this set, the Red Moonstone fits on the engine of the hearse, presumably making it even more metal. Monster Fighters was a series that I missed out on, but thanks to the secondary market, I'm going to slowly but surely build my own collection up. This is something that LEGO does best making their own wild franchises rather than building for others. Monster Fighter's aesthetic and theme is one that I can really get behind, and I'm always on the lookout for more sets to add to my fledgling collection. If you missed out on Monster Fighters the first time around as well, there are plenty of sets big and small you can find on the secondary market right now. Happy Halloween, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.